So, you have decided to jump in with both feet into the wonderful world of Farming Simulator. You've never played Farming Simulator before, but maybe you've seen a YouTube video or maybe you've seen it um, on, on the Steam store or on your, your PlayStation or Xbox. Maybe you have a friend that plays it and you thought, you know what, this game looks interesting. It seems like something I might be interested in. So you purchase it, and then when you get into the game, you realize you have no idea what you're doing, and that's all right, because you know what? We've all been there. We've all bought new games and have been lost. And the first thing I want to get out of the way right in the beginning of this video is that this is a video showing the most basic of basics with this game. This is for the people that have never played a farming simulator game prior to FS22 and maybe they're struggling and you know what again I just want to say that some of the things that I'm going to go over in this video may seem really basic or it, it may really seem like um, you know maybe I shouldn't be covering this because it's too easy but you know what I've had a lot of questions. I've had a lot of questions in past videos about how to do things that I think some of us that have been playing the game for a while or others that have been doing it may have thought that it's a, uh, you know, maybe a question that was really easy and it was really easy to figure out. But, again, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that there are any stupid questions. I don't feel that anybody should ever feel with any game that they play that there's something that they should just know how to do. Okay, we've all had games where we've missed something, something that may have been so simple or, or so easy to figure out, but we just missed it. It just happens. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And one last thing I'm going to say is that if I don't get to anything in this video that you guys really want to know about, just leave it in the comments. Um, if it's something pertaining to this video, I'll answer you in the comments. And if it's something on a different topic, then maybe that'll be in the next video that we do, okay? So, when you're very first starting off, you'll have to make your uh, character. I didn't go through that. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, what I would say is when you first start the game, it'll ask you if you want to do, like, a tutorial. Definitely do the tutorial. Um, it's not, it's not going to tell you how to do everything in the game, but it's going to get you on your way a little bit. And when you do that tutorial, you're going to get a help menu. I don't have the help menu up right now, so let's go into the settings to get the help menu on. So what we're going to do is you're going to hit the options button. And this screen here, guys, this is probably the most important screen in the game. You're going to come to this screen a lot playing this game. So while we're here, we might as well just take a look at this. So this is the overall map. This is the first one. And we have our filters on the right-hand side of the screen. So this tells you all your crops. And as you can see, it's color-coded. So you have wheat, barley, canola, oat, corn, sunflowers, soybeans, potatoes, sugar beet, sugar cane, cotton, sorghum, grapes, olives, poplar. And if we use the left analog stick, we have grass and oilseed radish. Okay? So again, these are all color-coded. Now, if we move over one more, this tells us our growth. It tells us what our fields are doing. So as you can see, it changes over. So we have stubble tillage, cultivated, plowed, seedbed, growing, ready to harvest, harvested, removed foliage, and withered. All right, so as you can see, this is ready to harvest. All these greens, these are growing. This field in blue, this is cultivated. This field is plowed. Uh, no, this field is harvested. Sorry, this field is plowed. They're using two different color purples for that. So just kind of keep in mind that there are different shades and stuff like that, especially with the growing. There are several different shades of growing on this map. Okay, if we move over one more, we have filters. This is the soil composition. So as you can see, everything needs to be plowed. Everything needs to be plowed. So if you don't want that, just press down on the left stick. These plowing is highlighted, then press your X button takes a second but then it'll remove that now it's showing you that everything needs lime okay so if you want you can move it down one more to highlight needs lime and press X and you can remove that 
as well. This is one feature that's on this game that uh, I'm not crazy about. I kind of hope they change. I don't want to see that all the land that's not, you know, that doesn't even have a field needs to be plowed <clears throat> or lime. So now we have weed and fertilize. These are the most important ones. We will get into these a little bit later. Um, wait, no, I didn't want to do that yet. Okay, now we have the hot spot. So this tells you where all of your stuff is, and this tells you where your trailers, your tools are, your tip stations, um, you know, your animals, productions. This is going to tell you where everything is on your map. It's your little legend key. Tip stations, those are generally where you can sell your crops. And then we have uh, productions, animals, workers, contracts, and other. And then we go back to crop types. Now, L1 and R1, you're going to be able to scroll on the side here, the map. Okay, so if we go down one with R1, this is your active workers. This is your worker menu. Again, we'll get into that um, maybe in another video. I think another video probably. Then you have your crop calendar. This is going to tell you when you can plant and harvest all of your crops. This is your weather. Now you can set uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit in the settings. I'll show you guys that as well. You have your prices. This is going to tell you what all the prices of all the crops are going to be everywhere on this map. Okay, so you can see um, the feed and grain south. The price is on the rise, but it's not the uh, it's not the most lucrative place to sell it yet. But if you sell there, the price will be on the rise. So that's something to think about. And like I say, as you scroll down, literally everything that you could sell in the game is here and it gives you all the prices. And if you press the square button, it'll show you the, uh, the price fluctuations throughout the year. So for example, wood chips, January is when they're, they're highest and <clears throat> presumably March is when they're their lowest or August. Still not quite sure how that works. I'm going to say it's August is when they're at their, their absolute lowest. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it works. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is your vehicle overview. This shows you all of your implements and vehicles that you have, the time on them, the maintenance, and uh, how much that they, they cost and all that. Finances, this tells you pretty much all the finances on your farm. So it tells you how many sold uh, animals, vehicle leasing, vehicle running costs, land sales, land purchase, uh, construction, new vehicles, sold vehicles, any new livestock, any animals you sell, um, your property income, production costs, how much wood you sold, uh, bales, wool, milk, uh, products, your fuel costs, pretty much everything is in your finances page. And this is also where you can borrow money from the bank in increments of five grand at a time. Moving down one more, this is animals. When you have animal pens, this will give you all the information on your animals. Again, this is something we'll talk about in a much later video. Contracts, this is very important, guys. This is where you can pick up contracts and, and make a little bit of money if your farm isn't ready to produce yet. So right now we have a fertilizing, a harvesting, two harvesting, and a spring. Now what you can do is you can accept the contract and use your own equipment. But if you don't have the equipment yet, you can borrow the items. If you borrow the items, you will take a little bit of a loss. For instance, this one here, the reward is $1,478. If you spray the field with your own equipment, if you borrow it, um, you're going to take a loss of $184. So that's not too bad. Same thing with all of these. Anytime you borrow, you're going to take a little bit of loss on the payment. Moving on down to production chains. Um, and once you buy production chains, all the information will be presented here and again this is something that we'll look at in a different video not this time statistics this is what it is it's your statistics it's uh worked uh hectares cultivated plowed how much spray time sowing time seed usage how many years you've played time played missions completed kind of just all the statistics that you would want in the game okay 
Now your game settings. Okay, this is very important. Pause the game. This is literally the only way to pause the time in the game. So that's your pause. You can create the name of your saved game here if you want. Auto save interval. So you can, this is default at 15. Let's see, you can have off in 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or off. And again, with this, uh, it's like... It seems like it only saves when you come to the screen, when you hit the option screen. I've never noticed it really saving while I'm playing the game, so... You could adjust your time scale. So let's go all the way to the end. So you have real time. And you actually have 0.50x slower than, than real time. Okay? So from there, you have 2x, 3x, 5x, 6x, 10x, 15x, 30x, 60x and 120x and you're going to want to set this to whatever you feel fits your style of, of gameplay economic difficulty okay so it's set it easy on this one because i started in new farmer mode there's three different difficulty levels i'm starting on the easiest because again i'm, I'm targeting the brand new players of this game and the most brand new players should choose the new farmer mode so it's set on easy you can put on normal and you can put on hard. Now this is going to change the the amount of money that you get from contracts. This is going to make your crops um, less lucrative, right? It's going to knock the prices of them down, and uh, and all that good stuff. Traffic, it is what it is. You can turn the AI traffic on or off. Seasons, seasons is a little trickier, guys. Now I actually have a video all about seasonal growth and and how long it takes for crops to grow and stuff. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can have seasonal growth on or off and paused. Okay, so from what I can tell, you never really want it on paused. Either yes or no. And now if you can see in the very top left-hand corner of the screen, right now it's at no, in the very top icon is a steering wheel. If I turn that to yes, you get the calendar. Okay, so that's the, that's the crop calendar I was showing you guys that tells you when you can plant, when you can harvest. So if you shut that off, that goes away. And in a nutshell, what that means is that you can plant any crop in any month that you want. Okay, with seasonal growth off, it doesn't mean that you still don't use seasons, yet you still don't pass through each day and pass through the months. It still does that, but you're not restricted on when you can grow and, and plant and when you can harvest, okay? It sounds complicated, and like I say, guys, go check out my video on that. I explain it in more in-depth. Days per month, again, pretty self-explanatory, but you can set how many days in the month. If you set one day a month, it's just like it says. Each day that passes will equal one month. And you can set this all the way up to 28 days. So that's almost like like real time um normally i play this on three to six days depending i'm still i'm still figuring out the sweet spot on my um on my role play right now i had to set to three days i may change that when things get busier but uh yeah we'll, we'll have to wait and see fix fixed visual month so you can basically set the game to look like whatever month you want it so you can kind of see in the background where we're at now, it's August, and then this is March. And as you go through, you can kind of see the background it changing. So again, this doesn't mean this doesn't mean that it'll shut the seasons off. The seasons will still progress, but you'll just never see the seasons progress. All right, it'll just stay fixed on whatever month that, that you like to look at the most. Snow, again, it is what it is. You can turn the snow on. You can turn it off. Crops to growth, your crop destruction, if it's on, that means if you drive through your crops without the proper tires, you will destroy the crops that go under your tires. Um, you could turn that off. You don't have to worry about it. Periodic plowing. Okay, so with plowing... When you first start a game, every field needs to be plowed, whether this is on or off, okay? Every every field will need to be plowed one time. If you shut this off after that one time, you'll never need to plow again. 
if you have this on, you'll have to peri periodically plow after certain crops. All right, so I think it's like your root crops and like your corn and stuff like that. So like your potatoes, your sugar beets, corn, I believe sunflowers, possibly sugar cane. Um, don't, maybe not sugar cane. We'll take a look at that in a second. But yeah, most of your, your root crops, every time you harvest them, you'll have to plow after them. Or you can shut that off and never have to plow in the whole game except for that one time. Fieldstone. So this is something in the game that when you plow or when you cultivate, you're going to dig up stones. And depending on the plow or the cultivator that you use and how deep it goes will depend on the size snow, uh, the size snow. Oh my God. The size of stones that you pull up. Okay. So smaller stones, you can use rollers and such to roll them under the ground or bigger stones. You'll have to get actual stone collectors to get them out of there. Again, you can turn this off. Never need to worry about stones. Lime required. Okay, so this is the same thing. With it on, you'll need to periodically put lime on your fields to get your yield bonus. You can shut it off. Never have to worry about liming. Okay, so that's just another step that you don't have to worry about if you really don't want to. Weeds. Weeds are another thing. Weeds will grow in your field. Um, if they're small and your crops aren't really poking through the ground yet, then you can use a weeder to pull them out. Otherwise, you'll have to use a herbicide and a sprayer to kill the weeds. Again, you could turn these off and never worry about weeds in any of your fields. So now we have dirt. This is pretty much what it says. Uh, this is how fast your machines will become dirty. I usually put this on fast because... Even at normal, it seems like to take a really long time to get them dirty. And fast still seems like possibly the, the most realistic way. I, I kind of like seeing them dirty. Automatic engine start. With this on, the minute you get into a vehicle, the engine will start automatically. And when you exit the vehicle, the engine will automatically shut off. You turn this off. When you get in the vehicle, you'll have to manually turn it on and turn the vehicle off. Stop and go braking. So with this on, when you hit the brake, and if you just hold down the brake button, which is the L2, you hold it down. When the vehicle comes to a stop, it'll start backing up. Okay, same thing with gas. When you, If you're backing up, your brake becomes the R2, which is the accelerator. You press and hold that down. The vehicle comes to a stop, and if you keep holding it down, it automatically starts to go forward. If you shut that off, then when you brake, you can hold that brake down and it, it'll stop. Once it stops, it stops. It's not going to go anywhere. You have to release the brake and then press it again to back up. This here, I feel, is most useful when you're using a wheel setup, a wheel and pedal setup. Um, otherwise, if I'm on the controller, I usually keep this on. Trail fill limit. Trailer fill limit. Okay, so in this game, weight is a huge thing. Okay, so with the trailers, they can hold so many liters, okay, and with this off, your trailer will get filled to the, the top of how many liters it can hold. So if a trailer can hold 60,000 liters with this off, you'll fill that trailer to 60,000 liters. If you turn this on, it'll only fill the trailer to its maximum allowed weight limit. Okay, so if your trailer's maximum limit is six ton, it'll only fill that until it hits six ton. Okay, so if that six ton is met before the actual liter capacity is, you won't fill it to the top. Okay, so if your trailer can hold 60,000 liters but this is on and the max weight limit is only six ton. It'll fill it till it hits six ton, but not till it hits the full liter capacity. Fuel usage, this is how quickly your, your tractors and your, your trucks and all your implements that use fuel will go through fuel and you have low and normal. Those are your only two options. Okay, so now we're getting to the AI workers. These are automatically all set to buy 
And you really don't want to do this. So what this is, when you hire an AI worker to do field work, if these are all set to buy, that means the worker will automatically refuel your tractor. It'll buy seeds. It'll buy fertilizer. It'll buy slurry. It'll buy manure. This will take up exponentially more money than it would if you had these off. So you definitely want to set all these to off no matter what. You never want the worker to buy these things. Okay, so those are the game settings. Now we have general settings. And again, guys, I, you know, I hope this video doesn't seem boring, but I really hope that this video just helps newer people really understand what all this is. The help window. This is the absolute most important thing you need to know. When you're just beginning on this game, you want this help window on. Just leave it on until you get comfortable enough, you know, to shut it off. And eventually, trust me, you will. You won't. You won't need this on. Maybe when a new mod comes out, you'll need to see what all it can do, and you'll you put it on. But other than that, after you've been playing the game a while, you won't need this on. But in the beginning, this is an absolute must. Um, colorblind mode, that's, you know, basically what it says. Interactive zone markers. You're going to probably want these on when you first start the game. And I'm pretty sure these are all default on when you start a new game. This is because I have other saved games and it kind of remembers the settings. So this is going to tell you where all of your zone markers are. All of your tip points, your sell points, all of your, your buy points, all of that good stuff. Field info. If you take this on, anything you look at in the game, you put your cursor on, it's going to give you information about. It's going to give you info on your field, your tractors, your silos, all that. We'll take a quick look at that when we get back in the game. Units. Again, this one, you can have dollars, pound, or euros, uh, miles or kilometers, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and acres in hectares. Now, there is a little bug in the game right now, depending on when you're watching this. If you're watching this when I put it out, there's a bug in the game. If you're watching this months later, hopefully it'll be fixed. But as of right now, if you set it to Fahrenheit, sometimes when I come out of the game and go back into the game, on the weather map anyway, it'll reset to Celsius. So I got to go back in here, change this from Fahrenheit to Celsius and back again, and then it'll fix it. Just something so you guys can uh, know in case you have that issue. The radio, you can turn the radio on or off. The radio range, you can have it set to vehicle only. Have it on always. Okay, so that means when you're out of the vehicle, just walking around, you'll still hear the music playing. Reset vehicle camera. Okay, so this will reset the camera position for each vehicle once you exit. So wherever the camera angle was when you left the vehicle, if this is on, this will remember for each vehicle. So I usually keep this off. Indoor camera suspension, I like to have this on. It gives you a more realistic feeling. But if you're someone that maybe gets a little motion sickness or something like that with games, then you're going to want to set this to off. Dynamic vehicle camera, um, the vehicle camera will try to stay horizontal with the environment. Again, this is more of a realistic thing. If you're not into that or you're sensitive to stuff like that, then you shut that off. Invert Y look, you know, that's, that's a preference. That's up to you. Input controls. Easy arm control. Turns on the simplified controls for the cranes. I always shut this off. I'm not sure what it does when it's on. It's something that you guys might want to experiment with, though, if you're, if you're new to the game. And this is just your camera sensitivity, vehicle, um, steering. This is something you're going to want to play with, I feel, whether you're on steering wheel or controller. I feel 50% is right around the sweet spot. <clears throat> Direction change. So this... To find that the vehicle direction changes automatically toggled or manually by pressing a button. I leave this on automatic, so in other words, if I'm going forward or backwards, it just automatically changes the direction. Now, I've never played this, played with this in manual. And honestly, we have gear shift mode. So when you put this in manual, you have to shift manually. And again, guys, I have a video for this as well. I will link that below in the subscriptions too to show you guys how the manual works. When you're in manual mode, you have to shift manually. And if you need to reverse, you need to shift it in reverse. So the direction change, I don't really understand. I've never used it. If it's something you guys really want to know about or can't figure out, 
I can look into it and maybe do a video later on, throw it in one of the uh, the how-to videos, and we'll take a look at that. Speedometer display value is either the engine speed, which that's your RPMs, or just vehicle speed. Switch to trains. Uh, trains are accessible when switching vehicles, so you can turn that on or off if you don't want to switch to the train. And then you have, you know, your, your volume, and uh, that's it. Now... The next tab that we're going to go to, guys, is one that I feel is kind of overlooked and hugely important if you're new to the game. So we have a help menu, and this literally does go over pretty much everything in the game. It tells you how to make money. It tells you about spending money. It tells you all about cultivating, sowing, and harvesting, how to improve your yield. Um, it tells you about grass, chaff and silage, root crops, catch crops, cotton, sugarcane, grapes and olives. It'll tell you about the seasonal farming, the crop calendar, and snow. Um, it tells you how to take care of your animals. It tells you general, it tells you different types of animals, how to take care of the feed and waste. It tells you how to take care of forestry. That's got even your character creation, the build mode menu, transport, your map, your AI workers, um, you know, your icons. It, it, it goes over quite a bit. So I would definitely say if you're new to the game, check this out and read through all this. This will be super helpful. Okay, now that we've looked at that, now you can see we have the help menu up. All right. And we have the uh, the field info one. So see, if we go up to the field, you get all the field info. It's owned by us. It's wheat. It's ready to harvest. It's not fertilized whatsoever. Okay. If we go up to this Deutschfarr harvester here, see that? Owned by my farm. Diesel, 555 liters. It tells us how much fuel is in it. Even the header, right? And I'll tell you about the header. So, what we're going to do real quick, we're going to hop in here. Okay, so now that we're in here, I don't have the automatic engine on. And this is good, okay? So, as you can see in the controls, as of right now, I'm not pressing any buttons. X is to attach. That'll attach the header, Okay. The circle will open the AI work menu, and R3 will select the camera. Inside, outside. See that? Okay, now, no matter where you are in the game, when you have this help window up, if you press and hold L1, you see the controls change. Right? Now, if I press and hold R1, we have a new set of controls. And if I press and hold L1 and R1, we get yet another set of controls. So, we're going to press and hold R1. And as you can see, it says square start engine. So with R1 held, you're going to press the square. All right, so the harvester is now started. Now it says X to attach. And again, guys, this is without any, any of the shoulder buttons held. Okay, so we're going to press X. There we go. And now our header is attached to the harvester. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to open up the harvester. So we're going to press and hold L1. And as you can see, X says unfold harvester. Okay. So now what we can do, we can turn on the harvester. And that will automatically lower the header. Or we can press circle and we can lift the header and lower it ourselves. Now if we press down... That extends the pipe for when we're ready to unload the grain. See that? And again, guys, no matter what vehicle you're using, this menu, this is what it's going to be. You're going to want to press L1 to see what the, uh, the controls are for L1. R1 to tell you what the controls are for R1. And then L1 and R1 will give you more. So anything you want to know, right, just go through those those buttons L1 R1 L1 plus R1 okay so now what we're gonna do oh, no, I didn't want to do that let's lower this down and then we can start harvesting and uh, yeah I think that's where we're gonna end this first video that's uh, I don't want these videos to be too long um, we're gonna cover more we're gonna do another video and we're gonna cover more of what we talked about I want to try 
to cover as much as possible for you guys. Again, if there's something that you really want to know, like, really soon, let me know in the comments, and I'll, I'll try to uh, hit that for you. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the game, welcome to the game. It, it's really a great game. Yes, it has some bugs right now. They're working on, on patches for them. So, fingers crossed they'll be out sooner or later. I hope you guys are enjoying the game if you're new to it. And, uh, yeah, feel free to ask any questions. Don't be afraid. And, uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.